Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. If you guys are here for the class, just come slightly closer towards any direction of this table. If you're one of those strange people, many say lucky, but if you're one of those strange people that are invited to the house, uh, a house of a billionaire or a millionaire, as you approach that house, as you approach that property, you see that the surroundings of that property are quite amazing. The gates probably are huge, security cameras everywhere. Only select people can get into that area, into that place. Can you imagine how it must be for those who are gifted to be invited to the property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Jannah? When those gifted people and those blessed people they approach the Jannah, what do they see? They stand in front of these huge, amazing gates. And they wonder, and they are bewildered, at what type of material are these gates made from? How are they so big? How are they so huge? How are they so wide? What are these colors on these gates? What is that that I'm seeing? The Prophet ﷺ said in the narration collected by Imam Ahmed, that just between the pillars of one of the gates of Jannah is a distance of 40 miles. So the believers, they are gathered and they are taken towards the Jannah. They are greeted with this welcome that no royalty would ever be greeted with in this earth. The angels of beautiful appearance meet them and bring them towards the gates of Jannah. And they say to them, peace be upon you, meaning peace be upon you forever and ever now. You have been purified. You are from those who are pure because you have been successfully saved from the hellfire. You are pure, so now you will enter into that which is pure. Enter into this Jannah and be therein forever and forever and forever. How will those believers feel? When they enter through the gates themselves, their minds, their thoughts, their feelings, their bodies will go into sensual overdrive. Why? Because they will see things which will just amaze them. They will smell things that they've never smelled before. They will feel things that they've never felt before. Yes, they will recognize some things from the dunya, but it will be so much more amazing to them. The colors, the ambience, the feeling, everything about that place in Jannah will just be a sensual overdrive for them. The Prophet Sallallahu said, as in Tirmidhi, in the Hadith Qudsi, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, أَعْدَدْتُ لِإِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ I've prepared, Allah says, for my righteous servants, that which no eye has ever seen. So those blessed people, they're going to see things which will just amaze them. They've never seen them before. مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ And I've prepared for them that which no ear has ever heard. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ And nor has any human being ever thought or imagined these things that Allah Azawajal has prepared in the Jannah. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, recite if you wish. فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ No soul will know or can know that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hidden for the righteous from that which is going to be beautiful and of reward for them. So this is the reality of those special people when they enter into the Jannah. They will see amazing things. And we must realize that whatever joy or beauty we experience in this world, always remember that Jannah is going to be thousands and thousands of times better than that. So the young child, the parent, the grown-up adult, the one who is getting old, all of us must remember that whatever phase we are going through in life, let us choose to always make sure that that phase in life, that time in life that we are spending, gets us to Jannah. Why? Why? Because Jannah is going to be so much better than this place. Let's not forget about the Jannah 
by living the phase that we're living now in life. We always have to remember that the Jannah is going to be the most of amazing places. In fact, one of the du'at, the callers to Islam who passed away, may Allah have mercy upon his soul, he said it could well be that you are walking through the paths of Jannah and you come across a rose. Now, if you come across a rose in the dunya, okay, that's nice and you keep walking, right? But it's going to be the case probably that you will see this rose in Jannah and it will stop you in your tracks. You won't want to pass it because the way it looks is just so amazing. The smell it gives to you, the aroma is so beautiful. You will stay there maybe for a day just looking at it. A day you may think 24 hours, but remember in Jannah there's no time. You do as you wish in Jannah. Time doesn't exist. So you can spend however much time you want enjoying yourself at a particular flower or at any other thing which catches your imagination or your enjoyment in Jannah. When you enter into the Jannah and the angels, they take you by your hand and they congratulate you moment after moment, you start to gaze upon your kingdom. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا Allah says, and when they gaze and they look, they will see in front of them an amazing kingdom which is theirs. So the angels will start to point to them. You see that floating castle over there? That huge, massive floating castle, that's yours. You see that tent over there which is hollow from the inside and hollow from the outside with the amazing colors, that's yours. Those beautiful wives, they're yours. Those young, amazing servants, they're yours. That amazing food which is floating in the air, just waiting for you to grab it, it's yours. Those drinks which are coming, whenever you think of them, they are yours. And you'll be saying, wow, really? All of this for me? I didn't do enough to deserve this. But this is Allah's mercy. Whatever you try to do to please Allah, Allah will magnify that for you in the Jannah. Always remember, it's upon us just to try. And Allah will magnify. We try, Allah will magnify the rewards. The Prophet وسلم, in the hadith in Tirmidhi, he was asked about what are the buildings like in Jannah. So he said that they are made from bricks of gold and silver. They are made from bricks of gold and silver. And the mortar is made from fragrant musk. And the pebbles are made from sapphire. And the earth of those houses, of those places where you live, is saffron. The question that can come to mind is who is the least wealthiest person in Jannah? What is his state? I mean, if these mansions and so much exist, we want to know what is the least wealthiest person in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned it in the hadith. In Sahih Muslim narrated by Abdullah ibn Masudin radiallahu anhu, the Prophet ﷺ said that the last person to enter into Jannah, he will be somebody who will take a step and then he will fall, and he will take another step, and he will fall, and he will continue like this, and he will be touched by the fire, meaning the flames of the fire will touch him. But then he finally gets away from the fire, and he turns to it, and he says, exclaiming in joy, Alhamdulillah alladhi najani mink. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has saved me from you. Laqad a'tani Allahu shay'an ma a'tahu ahadan min al awwalin wal akhirin. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me something that he has never given to anybody from the beginning of creation, creation to the end of creation. So he's the last one to go to Jannah, right? But he thinks he's the first to, be, to escape from the fire. So he's so overjoyed that Allah has saved him from the fire. That's enough for him. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he produces for him in the near distance a tree, a beautiful looking tree with water, streams of something, some type of nature under the tree. So the slave of Allah is looking at this and he begs Allah, Allah, please allow me to come near to that tree so I can come under it and benefit from its shade and from its water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, O son of Adam, if I give you that, will you promise not to ask me anything else? And he says, yes, Allah, I promise you, I will not ask you anything else. So look at this beautiful conversation that Allah is having with his slave. So the slave, he gets to the tree, he enjoys its shade, he enjoys its water. Sometime after, Allah Azawajal produces a second tree further in the distance. The slave, he's looking at it. You know how the son of Adam is, right? He wants that tree now. It's more beautiful than the first one. So he says, Allah, Ya Rabb, please bring me close to that tree. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, Did you not promise me that you wouldn't ask for anything else? He says, Oh Allah, after this, I won't ask you anything else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excuses him because he knows that he has seen something that he cannot bear. He cannot have sabr over it. So then he gives him that tree and the slave of Allah is resting there, resting in the shade and drinking. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after some time brings for him a third tree, even more beautiful than the first two. And the slave, he says, Oh Allah, please allow me to go to that tree and benefits from its shade and from its water. Allah says, did you not promise me, O son of Adam, that you wouldn't ask me anything else? He said, yes, Allah, I promise you that I will never ask you anything else if you give me the shade of that tree. So Allah gives him the shade of that tree because he knows that he cannot have sabr over it. And Allah is too generous and too kind. So when the slave, he goes to that third tree, he sits there under its shade and he drinks from its water. Huh? He says to him, huh? What's that? He can hear sounds. He can hear sounds of joy and amazing smells and aromas coming from Jannah. And he says, oh Allah, please allow me into there. Let me be from those people. So Allah says to him, oh son of Adam, what will it take for you to stop asking me? You keep asking me, what will it take for you to stop asking me? Will you be pleased that I give you the world, the whole world and the likeness of it again? The slave now at this point, he's just amazed and bewildered. And he's saying, oh Allah, you are the Lord of the creation. Are you ridiculing me and making fun of me? Yet you are the Lord of the whole world and everything that exists. Abdullah bin Masood, radiallahu anhu, the narrator of this hadith, he started to smile at this time. And he said to his companions, ask me while I'm smiling. His companions asked him. He said the Prophet وسلم, smiled at this time and told his companions to ask him why he was smiling. He said Allah Azawajal will smile when he has this part of the conversation with his slave. And he will say to his slave, Anna la minka, ala ma usha, asha qadir. I'm not making fun of you, but I can do whatever I will. It's easy for me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows his slave to enter into Jannah and to live from those who are blessed. So if this is the last person to enter into Jannah, Imagine those from the first and those of the highest ranks. May Allah make us from them. Ameen. The dunya, we live, we live in the dunya and we enjoy the dunya. But there's always something that comes with the enjoyment. There's always some pain or lack of pleasure mixed with the enjoyment. So you find, for example, you may eat something and it tastes so good. But within moments, it gives you discomfort. You may, for example, have a drink that you're not allowed to have in this dunya and it causes you to lose your mind or to give you a headache and to lose your health but in jannah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will produce things which will have no problem for the slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sorry my laptop is getting a bit strange here in any case Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that these people when they enter into the Jannah and they eat or they drink Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the people of Jannah when they enter into the Jannah there will be young people that will serve them drinks of wine but this wine will never give them a headache. It will never make them intoxicated. So they will be able to enjoy the things in Jannah without any pain, without any discomfort. Also, imagine that the people in Jannah, when they eat in Jannah, why are they eating? Do you get hungry in Jannah? You won't get hungry in Jannah, so why will you eat? Huh? Have a guess, go on. For fun, right? It's all for fun, it's all for enjoyment. You eat in Jannah for enjoyment and fun, like you do sometimes in the dunya. So you have tomorrow, Friday, a special treat. You're going to have a pizza maybe. Make sure you're buying pizza, okay? You have a special pizza. But then you have it the next week and the next week and the next week. What happens? You get bored, right? Bored of the taste. But in Jannah, you just cannot get bored of the taste. Why? Because every time you have that pleasure from your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's as though the first time you had it. You don't have that ability to get bored in Jannah of the taste and of the pleasures. 
it just keeps on increasing, increasing and keeps on giving you more and more of pleasure. The Prophet ﷺ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that from the things that you will own, like we said, you will have castles and you have mansions. But under those castles and under those mansions, you will have waterfalls and rivers. Not just one river, many rivers. Allah says that for the believers, for the muttaqun, for those who were pious in this world, that when they go to Jannah, they will have these rivers of flowing water which will never get stale, rivers of milk which will never go off, rivers of wine which will be tasty and pleasurable, and rivers of fresh, pure, clear honey. So imagine as the angels are taking you around and showing you that this is your river, and that is your river, and that is your river, and they all have different tastes. Amazing. And that will be under your mansions. It won't be that you will have to travel far. It will be for you, very close to you, for you to benefit. What are the bathrooms made of in Jannah? No bathrooms in Jannah. Ibn Hibban, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said that the Prophet Sallallahu was asked, how will the people relieve themselves in Jannah? He said he responded, they relieve themselves by perspiring through their skins and its fragrance will be that of musk. So there's no bathroom. You eat for pleasure and you don't have the discomfort of having to go to the bathroom. You eat your pizza, you go home and you smell good for your family. Right? The more you eat, the more you smell better. The more good you smell. So Allah gives bounty upon bounty. How long will the people of Jannah sleep for? What? No sleep in Jannah? Did you hear that? No sleep in Jannah? Can you imagine? Imam Bayhaqi radiallahu anhu collects in his Shu'ab al-Iman and Imam Albani authenticates it in Silsala Sahiha that the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Ayyanamuna Ahlu Jannah, Ya Rasulullah, do the people of Jannah sleep? Because you know in the dunya, right? No matter where you are, in what type of luxury you're in, there's only so much of it you can take. Party, then another party, and that's it, you're out. Right? Even for the worst of person, he can only do so much of that type of partying. But in Jannah, you can party non-stop. You're happy to hear that, right? It goes on and on. You don't have to sleep. The Prophet ﷺ said, Annom akhul mawt. That sleeping is the brother of death, meaning it's a type of death. Wa ahlul jannah la yanamun. And the people of Jannah, they just do not go to sleep. You go on and on and on in your pleasure. Allahumma razakna Jannah. In this dunya, every one of us experiences sorrow, experiences sadness, because that's the nature of life. This is not Jannah. We have to experience some sorrow, some tiredness, some ta'ab, and problems. But in Jannah, the people will say, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ عَنَّ الْحَزَنَةِ Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has removed from us all types of sorrow. It's just never going to exist again. Imam Ahmad radiallahu anhu was asked, مَتَى يَجِدُ الْعَبْدُ طَعْمُ رَاهَا When does the slave find the feeling or the experience of relaxation? So it's an amazing statement, it's an amazing question if you think about it, because he's talking about people of that time, right? When the people were righteous, they wouldn't rest and, you know, have so much free time like we do. They were all the time busy, all the time worshipping Allah or serving the religion. So they were tired and they asked Imam Ahmad, when will we find the time to rest? He said, in the awali qadamin yadda'uha fil jannah. He said, as soon as you put your first foot into jannah, there will be a gust a breeze or something of that nature will just take away from you any feeling of tiredness or sorrow or any negative feeling that you ever had. And you will completely forget that you ever had any difficulty in life. It just will not be able to come to your mind that you had difficulty in life. Because as soon as you enter into the Jannah, it's all pleasure, it's all positive, and there's no negativity there whatsoever. Now, lots of people will be wondering 
What is the nature of Jannah in sense of how long does it last? Because in the dunya, no matter what pleasures you have, you have to leave them. It happens like in cycles. We always go through phases. We have a phase of pleasure. We leave it. We go through less pleasure. Or we may be one of those strange people that have pleasure all the time. Even if you're that person that Allah is testing you with, continual pleasure, you're going to have to leave it. Allah says, وَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الْإِيَاحِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا Strike for them, O Muhammad وسلم, an example of the life of this world, like water which comes down from the skies, rain comes down from the skies. It mixes with the plants, and the plants, they start to look beautiful and fresh. That's life, right? Phases in life, everything looks good. And then all of a sudden, everything dries up. After time, those plants, they dry up. The wind comes along and just blows it away. That is the nature of life. Life, you're going to enjoy it. It's going to look beautiful at times, but all of the time, it just disappears. And then finally, at one point in time, life will just come to an end. But Jannah, absolutely no way. It will go on and on forever. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ إِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا The best thing for you and the thing which is everlasting is your good deeds. Meaning your good deeds will lead you to Jannah and you will be everlasting life in the Jannah. We ask Allah to make us from them. Ameen. The Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim that a caller will call out. And he will say, O oh, people of Jannah, indeed may you be healthy and never sick again. I mean, he's proclaiming now you will never be sick again. You will always be healthy. You will live and never die. Can you imagine hearing that in Jannah, that now you will never ever die? Imagine how elated you will feel to know that this is just eternity. Never again do I have to worry about death. Just continue with pleasure for the rest of my life. You will never grow old and you will never grow feeble. You will never feel sorrow or ever feel regret again. In Jannah, not only will the surroundings be beautiful, but you, O oh, ugly person, will be beautiful too. I'm joking, you're not ugly, you're good looking. But in Jannah, you will look amazing. Your features will look amazing. What age will you be in Jannah? Around 40, right? Around 40, which is the peak of maturity. But you will be young, full of energy. What about the clothes that you wear? Allah will give you the most amazing clothes. That the, Allah says, upon them will be clothing made from fine silk and green in color. And they will be given jewelry on them that they are wearing, which is made from... Um, made from silver and the Lord will give them amazing pure drinks to drink so don't worry about the Amani clothing of this dunya don't do anything haram to get clothing in this dunya always remember that in Jannah you're going to look amazing you're going to look beautiful in fact it's narrated that when you go home to your spouses to your family they will be in shock because every time you go out of the house and you come back you will look younger and you will look more handsome than you were when you left can you imagine and then the man will say, same to you. What's happened to you? You also look younger and you also look more beautiful than when I left you. See, the beauty is just, is just continual. That's the place we should aim for. May Allah give it to us. Ameen. In Jannah, unlike in the dunya, it's impossible to have any rancor, any ill feelings in your heart. Allah says in Surah Al-Hijr, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ إِخْوَانٍ عَلَى سُرُرٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ And we have removed from their chests any form of ill feeling and they are now sitting on, front, on thrones as brothers looking towards one another. So in Jannah, as we said, there's no negativity. Nobody can make you upset. It's impossible. No matter what you do in Jannah, your parents will never be upset with you. You could do what you want in Jannah. Freedom. Now there's some rules. In Jannah, it's free. The one who's having difficulty with his spouse in this dunya, the wife who finds that her husband is so grumpy and difficult to be with. Likewise, the husband who finds that his wife is not from the type that always gives him joy and comfort. Don't worry too much, because if you both get to Jannah, you will live a life where, wherein you will never feel those feelings of negativity again. It will always be joy. So don't always think about this dunya. Remember that this dunya is just a short journey. It's very short. Overlook the faults that we have with each other. 
because we want to be together in Jannah. This is just a journey. We want to be together in the Jannah. <clears throat> what is the greatest enjoyment in Jannah? What is the greatest thing that you will have in Jannah apart from the ice cream and the pizza? Being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said in Sahih Muslim, إِذَا دَخَلَ أَحْلُ الْجَنَّةِ الْجَنَّةِ يَقُولُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَتُرِيدُونَ شَيْئًا أَزِيدَكُمْ So when the people enter into Jannah and they've spent some time looking around Jannah, just being amazed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, is there anything else that I can increase you in? And they will just think, what, really? After all you've given us, they will say, أَلَمْ تُبَيِّدْ وُجُوهَنَا did you not make our faces bright by everything that you've given us? Did you not enter us into Jannah? They will be exclaiming their joy. Didn't you save us from the hellfire? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the veil which covers him. So they will be given the ability to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will be the best enjoyment that they have ever, ever experienced in Jannah. Forget about the joy of this dunya. I'm talking you the best enjoyment that you can imagine that you will experience in Jannah is to finally be able to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from them. But who are those people that get to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They are those that look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya. What do I mean? You cannot see Allah in the dunya. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَعْلًا أَنَّهُ يَرَاكْ As it says in the hadith. Know that you cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but know that He sees you. So that is how we have to live our lives. Wherever I am in life, I have to remember that Allah is watching me. Allah is seeing me. Am I pleasing Allah? Am I seeing Allah in this action that I'm doing? Am I seeing Allah in this statement that I'm making? Am I seeing Allah in this interaction with this human being? So if I see Allah all the time, in my different states of life, then for sure you will be from those who see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in conclusion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ The one who is saved from the hellfire and brought to the jannah, then that is the true success. And very well, this life is just a life of deception. So let's always remember that we are aiming for the Jannah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that he showers his bounties upon them. Ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shortcomings and mistakes from myself and shaitan. We kept it short because it's very late. Ask Allah wa jal to make your efforts heavy in your scale of good deeds. Ameen. And if you have any questions, then feel free inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, so you won't do any praying in Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but you will want to remember Allah for enjoyment. So when you make dhikr and you do things of that nature, it will be for enjoyment purposes, not as an obligation. It will be that the righteous people, they enjoy Allah's company through dhikr in this life. For them, Allah's company will be even more through dhikr in the hereafter. But in terms of playing in other acts of worship, I'm not sure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But there will be the remembering of Allah and something of that effect. Oh wow, amazing question. How did I forget that? How did I forget that? Amazing. That's what kids, you have to have kids around you, man, I tell you. In Jannah, people, whatever you think of, it comes to you. You don't have to pick the phone up and make the order. Pizza Hut won't be late in the delivery. You think of it, it's there for you. Right? Allah Akbar. May Allah give us Jannah. Ameen. Hmm. So the brother is asking about how is our situation with regards to remembering Jannah and remembering the hellfire and, and connecting that to taqwa. Uh, so remembering the hellfire is, and death is something which you know, is encouraged to do so as is remembering the Jannah. The believer, he flies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on two wings, the wing of fear and the wing of hope. If he loses one of them, he becomes imbalanced. So the bird has to have both wings. The wing of fear, which is remembering the hellfire, but also at the same time, the wing of hope. And the ulama, they say when you are young like we are, or some of us are, uh, then you have more of the remembrance of fear. Because when you're young, you, there's too many temptations. The more you fear Allah and think about the nar, the more that will you keep you away. But as you're getting older, and your life is changing, you don't have as much energy, that's when you remember more about the hope of Allah, the forgiveness and the jannah. But in any case, it should change from state to state. 
When you're in the Salah, sometimes you think of the hellfire and sometimes you think of the Jannah. Really and truly what's supposed to happen is when you read the Quran and when you come across a verse of the Nar, you stop in your tracks and you ponder over it and you seek Allah's refuge from it. And likewise with the verses of Jannah, it stops you in your track and you think about how beautiful Jannah is and you beg Allah to be from those of Jannah. This kind of interaction is required from us uh, for the Jannah and the Nar and Allah knows best. They will never ever feel thirst again. So those who drink from the kawthar, they will never ever feel thirsty. Yeah, because not everybody, there will be people who will be gathered there, but they will be turned away by the angels. And the Prophet ﷺ will say, out of concern, they're my ummah. And it will be said to him, you don't know what they did after, your dim, after you had passed away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was that they were people who changed the religion, right? May Allah save us from that. Ameen.